butterscotch, candy corn, bananas to you too. <laughs> hey, hello. This is Patrick, Paul Capone Engineering, shop manager here, process engineer. Everyone wears many hats. I'm gonna abbreviate that part of my uh, speech. This here is a uh, Femco HL25. It's a two axis lathe. It was made in 2008. We bought it new in 2008, and it has been with the company ever since then. So she's turning 16, I guess, next year. And uh, it has been a workhorse for the company. We mix a lot of things. And for those of you who don't know what a lathe is, it makes round stuff. So the workpiece or whatever you're working on spins and the tools are stationary. They're in a turret over here. Turret. So these, these change, you got a bunch of different tools. You get 12 typically, this one has 12. This is known as a slant bed lathe. Um, and it is the first machine we, we automated. It's also the easiest machine to automate because you just stick a bar feeder on the back of it. So it has a 12 foot hydro, LNS hydro bar, which is just a really, really basic hyd hydro bar, really basic bar feeder. And uh, you can basically take full 12 foot bars, stick them in that thing. This thing will chop it up, catch the parts. It's got a little parts catcher in there, which is gonna hit the chucks because that's not supposed to be there. Um, but it'll, you know, make a part, cut it off, advance the bar, make a part, cut it off, advance the bar, catches them in this little conveyor and it comes out on a bucket over there. So we make, you know, all of our round things like axle nuts, the axle, and then you assemble the nut onto the axle motor light arms so it comes off the lathe first and then it goes onto a mill and gets all the milled features so all the square stuff is done on a different machine um, but yeah so this has made a ton of stuff over the years we've put a lot of money in it, in it the last couple of years just to keep it going it's uniquely sized it's actually the only machine that fits here as far as i can tell um, so, you know, at this point, we're going to keep it going. So we, put, we actually put a whole new turret assembly on this machine last year uh, where we just took the turret off the carriage, dropped a brand new. We had the place send us a new one, put it in, and uh, it's working great. Spindles probably needs to be done, but it still has the original spindle in it from 2008. Tailstock's fine. Everything's super square, super great. Uh, on, I don't, I'm going to talk about how many cutting hours versus how many on power on hours. So all these controls track how, how long the machine's either been on sitting, which it is now, it's not actually doing anything, uh, versus its cutting time, meaning time in cut. So when it's actually cutting something, uh, it tracks all that, kind of like an odometer in your car. Uh, this machine has 35,928 power on time. So this would be considered power on, it's just on sitting here, not doing anything and it has 15,565 cutting hours on it. And that means timing cut. So just when it's only when it's cut in metal. And it's kind of hard to put that in perspective, but mills will have a lot higher time of cut because they take longer to remove material. This is gonna come in, take like a one second cut, two second cut, zoom new, new tool, maybe a three, 10 second cut. You know, it's not taking very long to cut. So. That is a lot of cutting hours for a lathe. Uh, this machine has been a bar fed machine, so it runs automated. We don't touch it. It just makes parts and we come by and check parts. So this thing has basically been on and running parts most of its life. It just recently got into being more of a chucker lathe where we, we do piece part work, meaning we're taking one piece, someone stands here and loads the piece into the, into the chuck. Uh, so, you know, that makes it less efficient, but that's how we make things sometimes. So where am I going with this? That is a great question. <laughs> well, I guess where I'm going is not all old stuff bad, not all new stuff good. That's not right. All the new equipment's really good. And we, we do have new equipment here. Uh, the downtime from having things break does cause a lot of headaches. Um, but when they're, when they're working good, I'm very happy. So, we hold tents on this machine. We're making hub shells. The bearing boards on these hub shells are plus or minus two tenths, and that's tenths of a thousandth of an inch 
In machinist lingo, we talk in thousandths, so 0 0.001, so that's a thousandth of an inch, and then tenths or ten thousandths of an inch, which is the one next to it, so it's three zeros and then a one, so it'd be 0 0.0001, or in this case, 0 0.0002, plus or minus two, and so that's 10 times thinner than an average human hair, which is usually between three to five thousandths. So plus or minus two tenths of a thousandth of an inch is really small. You can't see it. And so we have tools, metrology tools, to help us measure it. And this shop, we pretty much exclusively use Mitutoyo. They're from Japan. They're very high quality measuring tools. Uh, this is a this is known as a digital hole micrometer or digital hole test micrometer, depending on who wants to talk about it. But you put it in here as three anvils. You clickety click click, and the little clicky wheel makes it so everyone measures with the same amount of force, and it's a very consistent way to get your dimension. We'll see. This one's intolerance. Boom! It's one tenth out of nominal. So this is measuring. I'm not going to tell you what we do our bearing bores too, but it is. Can you say that anymore? I don't know, but it's ammons, as we should say up here, up in uh, ammon country. Shake the L out of them. I'm going down a rabbit hole. Anywho, I hope you found this interesting. I find this stuff wildly fascinating, and uh, that's probably why I do it every day. I enjoy coming here to do it. And I hope you enjoy whatever you're doing out there. Thanks for taking this moment tooling around with Pat. Another moment to come hopefully i'll see you in the future peoples of butterfly flutterby bananas to you i was uh i was just kind of long for the ride you know life's a ride grab it by the handlebars moments in time with pat